Good afternoon, Dresden. My name is Mark Baker, and I'm here to talk about SPL, the Standard PHP Library. And I can't see much at the back because it's fairly bright lights, but uh, hopefully I'll manage okay. SPL, the Standard PHP Library, has been a part of PHP since 5.3.0 and it comprises a number of different constituent parts, but has anyone here actually used SPL before within their code? There's a, a few hands going up, that's good to see. SPL comprises, like I say, a lot of different components, data types, an autoloader, uh, interfaces, iterators, a handful of exceptions, some data structures, some file handling uh, classes, and various miscellaneous functions. So it's a real hodgepodge, as we would say in English, of all matter of different things. Almost certainly you're using some parts of it somewhere in your code, even if you don't actually realize it. When the SPL was first adopted into the core of PHP, it had been custom written for PHP 5. Point, well, 5.0, became part of standard PHP core in 5.30. But I would hope that everyone these days has uh, upgraded a little bit from 5.30. And is anyone still running 5 here, or are you all on 7? Hopefully everyone should be on 7 by now. PHP 7 was a fairly major rewrite of PHP Core itself. But the SPL components of PHP weren't rewritten in quite the same way. In fact, they weren't rewritten at all. So SPL suddenly is lagging behind a little in what it actually does compared with what you can do now in userland PHP. As an example of this, <laughs> SPL's data types. Well, technically SPL data types aren't part of core. Um, they're still an experimental component uh, that was originally developed as an alternative to type hinting before scalar type hinting existed. Um, as such, they've very much been superseded by PHP 7 scalar type hinting and are, well, kind of an attempt to duplicate something that is now already there. Has, has anyone ever tried actually looking at SPL's uh, data types? Oh, good grief, we do have someone. Did you find them useful in any way? <laughs> that sums it up. What you had to do, and they were quite useful potentially, but in practice they weren't, it provided classes for integers, floats, strings, booleans, and enumerated data types. And what you would do would be to construct your SPL int, passing in an integer value, so you've now got a class that contains an int. You can type int that when you're passing it to, met to other methods and functions. And that was how it worked, except you had to be able to get your integer out to do anything with it. So there was a lot of code wrapped around that you would have to do if you wanted to add two SPL ints together, you had to extract each integer back to a PHP scalar integer, add them, and then store the result of that back into a new SPL integer. So they really weren't of any use to man or beast. Um, so PHP itself now has scalar type hinting. How many people are using that? Please, lots of you say, yeah. Oh, good, great show of hands there. SPL could drop its data types completely and no one would care. 
PHP's own scalar type hinting is so much better. Now, we only had one hand went up when I asked who had even used it. Next component of SPL, the autoloader. How many people don't use autoloaders? Do we have anyone? Yeah, you're using the SPL autoloader. Whether you're using it via Composer or you're using FAR files, you're using SPL's autoloader under the hood. So everybody is actually using SPL, at least in that degree. Could we drop that component from SPL now that we've got PA? No, we couldn't. We still want to carry on using Composer, don't we? So just look at the first two components of SPL. Are they worth keeping? One of them absolutely not. One of them absolutely essential going forward. But SPL is a lot more than just data types and autoloader. We have a fun one here. That's a toolbox representing interfaces. SPL, sorry? <laughs> well, yep, countable, first one I've listed there. Together with um, various iterator interfaces. Are they useful? They are in some ways, but you have to implement them yourself. Even something like the pattern interfaces for the observer pattern <coughs> provides an interface for you, but you have to in implement it yourself because all it provides you with is the, the abstract. I've not bothered with any code for this, or have I? No, I didn't bother. You have to implement those interfaces yourself if you want to use them within your own code. It's not so much a toolbox, it's more that little imprint on the back of a tool cabinet that tells you what type of torque wrench has to go in that particular slot. They're useful if you know how to implement them and that you have to implement them yourself because you can type into an interface. So you can ask for a countable object and you can check if an object is countable. It's one little area of SPL that, do we need it still, do we not? Well, actually that depends on the next part. Iterators. Drink. <laughs> Was that a shout of drink? Yeah. Iterators provide, or categorized in a variety of types. You've got arrays and collection iterators, uh, you've got your file and folder iterators, you've got an, a nice little XML iterator in there, if anyone has ever actually used that, together with filter iterators, multiple iterators. There's a whole list of iterators there, and that's where the drink comes in, because you can have great fun playing the drinking game, talking about the iterators and naming them all as the iterator iterator and the recursive iterator iterator, and, and you can really get your tongue stuck trying to say them all very, very quickly. Hence the drinking game. Iterators are not particularly well documented in PHP and the names just are not intuitive. What does a recursive iterator iterator do? I mean, it's got iterator twice in the name. What does that mean? Surely that's recursive in its own right and we're getting into the drinking game again, aren't I? If you really want to learn about iterators in PHP within the SPL, there's a couple of very good resources for you. One of them, written quite some while back, was Josh Tyson's book about the SPL library as a whole, but it has an extremely good section on iterators in there. A much more recent book, Cal Evans has been doing a lean publishing book iterating PHP iterators, and we could get into the drinking game again, but I'm not going to this time. If you want to learn about the iterators and how to use them and what they're capable of, and they are actually extremely powerful, 
and can really simplify your code for doing a whole host of things like parsing XML, uh, getting directory or folder listings of different file types, especially when you combine regex iterators with recursive directory iterators, as I'll actually show you in an example in a minute. Um, they are very, very useful. There are part of SPL that I would not like to see dropped in any way. I would like to see it updated ever so slightly so that the code reflects PHP 7 code internally, but I think they're very important tools. However, PHP 5.5 introduced generators. Generators are iterable objects. You can create your own very, very easily to work through iterable data in your own way. I really love generators. So do they supersede iterators? Well, you probably cannot read that code. I don't expect you to read that code. It's just there as an example of a piece of code that will recursively read through a folder and all its subfolders and subsubfolders and return iterably a list of all image files. That's using standard SPL iterators to do so. If you're really fascinated by the code, I'll put my slides online later. I did the same code using generators. Now, that should be unreadable to you because it is so many more lines of code, which is the point I'm trying to make. SPL iterators, small volume of code, to do the same using generators, there's probably nearly three times as many lines of code there to actually achieve the same thing. So when you're writing code, if you want to write the same thing yourself using generators, expect to write three times as much. But that's when it comes to writing it. Running it is somewhat different. My generator code, much, much faster. It uses less memory. So there are benefits to using the SPL iterators for that kind of purpose in that it's a lot less code that you have to write to do so, but it's slower and it uses more memory. So pros and cons of iterators compared to using generators and writing your own code to do the same thing. More code if you're using generators. Plus, you have to write your own tests for the generator code. If you're using SPL's iterate, SPL iterators, the SPL iterators are well tested, part of the standard PHP suite of tests. And if the results of the PHP test fest ever get merged into PHP as well, if for those of you that remember the test fest last year, there'll be even greater code coverage of iterators there. So if you use iterators, you're working with code that's already tested. Write generators, you have to write your own tests. So more code and more tests, so surely iterators have all the benefits there. Well, no, we've already seen that they're slower and more memory expensive than writing your own code. So, are there any other cons with generators? Well, actually, yes. You can't rewind a generator. So if you wanted to recurse a second, or iterate a second time over your directory structure of image files, you'd have to instantiate a new generator object to do it, rather than simply rewind and go through it all again. And you can always extend SPL's iterators. None of them are declared final. Actually, there is a final iterator. Never mind. Almost all of them you can extend. 
apart from those that are declared final. So you can build upon the existing code and do even more with it if you use SPL. So do SPL iterators still have a place with PHP 7? Depends what you're after. If you're after performance, pure and simple, yes, you can do things with generators, but I would recommend using the iterators still if you can wade your way through the um, drinking game of iterator, iterator, and recursive iterator, iterator, and flex, uh, etc. Does anyone recognize the game? Last time I give, gave this talk, it was in France, where this particular game is very popular. I'm not sure if it is in Germany. It's rugby. Rugby is all about catching balls and tries, try being the equivalent of scoring a goal. So we have trying and catching exceptions. SPL actually provides us with a whole mass of exceptions. And I suspect that you'll be using at least some of those, even if it's just in libraries that you use within your code. Some of them are very popular, the range exceptions and, uh, and so on in libraries often use the SPL exceptions. They're nothing more than an extension of the base PHP exception class. So you've got all the methods available to you still. They're even defined in a nice little hierarchy there. So you can catch something like a logic exception which traps for Ooh, I have to read bad function call exception or bad method call exception or domain exception. So you can catch at any level and it'll pick up on all the sub-levels there. So they've, they've thought it through when they created these. But at the end of the day, they all extend exception. Often when you're working with libraries, libraries define their own namespaced exceptions. You spot that every single one of these is in the global namespace. So if you're working with libraries, often you will use and catch the namespaced exceptions that they throw. So major problem, all in the global namespace. You can't, re you can't create new exceptions with the same name unless you namespace them. Is SPL worth keeping just because of those new exceptions? Almost certainly not, because even if you are using them, it's simple enough just to create a, an exception class yourself, extends exception, that replicates exactly that. It's two lines of, well, it's a class definition. It doesn't even have to have any methods, because there's nothing that SPL's exceptions give you no new methods, no new properties that aren't in the base exception that PHP provides. I always introduce cats in any of my talks. And what can I say? I like cats. One of the things that I think a lot of people have encountered with SPL is data structures. How many people use SPL data structures? Oh, you've got at least one. A couple of hands going up. Yes, that's good to see. SPL provides a whole series of data structures, stacks, heaps, queues, uh, a fixed array. Fixed array is quite an interesting one if you know exactly how big you're, uh, you, you want your array to be and you only want an enumerated array key offsets from zero, you can use an SPL fixed array, define that size in advance, it grabs all the memory in one go, and then in theory everything is a whole lot faster. And with PHP 5, that was always the case. SPL data structures were far superior to anything you could write in user land code in terms of performance and in terms of memory. Well, pretty much the case. There's the odd little exception uh, for certain methods, but 
for proper use or for, for correct usage of the data structures, they were vastly superior. And this is probably the biggest area where PHP 7's performance benefits have changed things in that regard. If we look, for example, at fixed array, first pair of graphs is PHP 5, second pair is PHP 7. I've done a user land array just using a normal array structure, an SPL array, and you can see that for the most part, everything is a little bit faster, but a lot more memory, uh, uses a lot less memory f when you're using SPL structure. So you're getting a lot of benefit by using SPL, particularly in terms of memory with P under PHP 5.6, and in this case, still some benefit with PHP 7, but the benefit is a lot less. <coughs> Likewise, for performance, the SPL data structure is better in some regards. Fixed array maybe isn't the best example. Fixed array is really much better for memory saving uh, than for performance, but there is a slight benefit depending on exactly what you use it for. And we can see similar patterns if we look at things like doubly linked lists. Ooh, actually no, that's an even worse pattern. Doubly linked list SPL actually uses more memory now with PHP 7 than the user land implementation. So the benefits are really beginning to drift away here because SPL was never updated for PHP 7. Now, some people think that data structures are purely an academic ivory towers type thing. But used in the correct situations, there can be a real benefit to your code. So I've always liked data structures. There's my stack. Again, similar. PHP 7, it uses more memory than a user land stack. Q. Ah. At least as regards queues, there is one be big benefit. Extracting something from the queue, pushing it, popping it off the queue, or dequeuing it, you cannot easily do without an enormous overhead in user land PHP. But even so, benefits for pushing, the memory benefits are all gone. And something like the heap, mm, dumping stuff onto the heap, quite a bit slower. Yes, it's faster for extracting it, not much memory saving there. So one of the biggest arguments for using SPL, the SPL data structures, is largely wiped out by the performance and memory benefits that PHP 7 has brought in the first place. So, one thing that I would like to see, and this is just a personal preference, I would like to see SPL's data structures deprecated. I would like to see them replaced. I would like to see them replaced with a Peckle library written by a guy called Rudy Funison. <laughs> There's a few links to it for those of you that might want to uh, explore that further. But Rudy's library provides not just the basic data structures that SPL did, but it provides a few additional ones as well. Things like the double-ended queue. And yes, I've never fully got my head around that one, but I do use data structures a lot, and I have worked with this library a lot, and it is performant. It was explicitly written for PHP 7. It is far superior to the existing SPL data structures in terms of performance and memory, 
when run with PHP 7. I'd like to see it extended still further to put additional data structures in because there's scope for a lot more. Um, I have user land implementations of trees and quad trees as data structures. I'd like to see C code for those added to Rudy's Peckle extension. And I would like to see that become part of core PHP. So my personal preference would be to drop SPL data structures completely and replace them with that. Now, of course, if you're already using SPL data structures, that would require a little bit of code change on your part to switch across to, to Rudy's. But if you get an opportunity to use data structures in future, I would recommend looking at that particular library. Okay. Among the other things that um, are available within SPL, there's a whole series of file-related um, classes. Three of them in all. You've got file information object, SPL file info, uh, which provides you with all the various bits of information about date created, date modified, file size, all kinds of very useful tidbits there. It reflects every file function available for information, but all packaged in a class. So if you're really into your object-oriented coding, it's well worth using SPL file info instead of um, fcreate or fopen or all the basic file functions that are provided within basic PHP. This is still part of core. SPL is still part of core. So something like SPL file info is available to you. SPL file object gives you the mechanisms for reading and writing files. It handles, has special methods for CSV files. So if you're reading CSV files, you can do so in an object-oriented way. I'm sure a lot of people have written their own object code for doing exactly that. It's available already and has been since PHP 5.3.0. Um, and allows you to write some very nice, clean, fully object-oriented code without reverting to the procedural functions at all. And if you're working with temp files, you also have temp file object there, which will automatically create temporary files, assign names to them internally, and allow you to do exactly the same type of functions with those. Um, strongly recommended by me at the very least to use those where you get an opportunity to do so, uh, purely because of how clean it leaves your code. There is one minor problem, though, which you do need to be aware of. They forgot to implement close. Actually, I'm not sure if they forgot to or just didn't bother. But what it does mean is that once you open a file handle using SPL file object, you can't close it again. You have to wait until the destructor is called will close the file for you, which mm, feels a bit ugly to me. But that's one minor complaint. Perhaps anyone would uh, someday do a PR for it that uh, will allow you a or will introduce a close method. I don't know if German shops have the equivalent of this. We used to have stores in England called Woolworths where you bought a bag of sweets and you would just go through all the um, different packages or different shelves filling your bag with whichever mix of sweets of of all the different types you wanted. It's a pick-a-mix, it was called. Um, but I use this to represent assorted functions. It's miscellaneous, for want of a better word. 
and there are a number of functions that the SPL provides that, again, people might have used there for information about classes and objects. So class implements, which allows you to get a list of the interfaces for any given uh, class or for an object, looks at the uh, interfaces that the class implements. Um, of course, back when SPL was first written, PHP 5.3, reflection, I do like my cats, reflection was a horribly slow, painful thing to use. Nowadays, you can implement all those using reflection and they will run a lot faster. The reflection will allow you to extract that information from a class just as quickly and as, as efficiently as the class methods that SPL provided. So in that regard, SPL is kind of superseded, especially as reflection can give you a whole lot more information in addition. Ah, yes, iterator functions. Work on any iterable. So you can use these with any of uh, SPL's iterators. You can use them with generators. You can't use them with arrays, unfortunately. But I suppose there are limits, and, SP, um, and PHP is working towards the point where you would be able to use equivalents for arrays, generators, iterable objects, all using the same methods, but for the moment, not. Iterator apply is quite a nice little alternative to array map, but for use with iterables and such as generators and SPLs iterators. Iterator count, fairly obvious, and if you have to convert an iterable object to an array at any point, you've got an iterator to array function. But beware of those last two. If you've got a 10 trillion line file, and you're using an iterator to read that file, and you try it executing iterator count on it, it's going to take a heck of a long time to execute. If you try iterator to array, you're going to run out of memory. So use those functions if you ever use them wisely. Don't use them on something where you which has the potential to blow your memory or to take 10 minutes to run. Uh, you simply wouldn't want that happening in your code, certainly not production code with a user expecting a response. Um, so somewhat dangerous, use with caution, and to be honest, they're very simple to implement in user line code in a few lines of code as well if you really wanted to do so. So are there any real benefits to them? Probably not. Do you really want to take your iterator, which you're probably implementing to save memory, and do an it use iterator to array to load everything into memory? Probably not. OK, the purpose behind this talk is probably twofold. The first part is just to give you a quick run through of the various components that exist within SPL. I'm sure not everyone is aware necessarily that there were file classes built into SPL. Um, some of you will have been, some of you won't. Um, were people aware of these miscellaneous functions? They might have their place within your code base if you'd known about them. Well, now you do know about them. So the first part of this talk was intended very much, or the first objective of this talk was very much to give you an overview of just what is in, in SPL, in case you'd forgotten it or never found it. 
The second part was my attempt to assess whether it still had any value with PHP 7, which is why I've looked at things like generators as opposed to using iterable objects. Well, my summary is data types can do without, without problem. Autoloader, absolutely essential. We couldn't, do, we couldn't live without autoloaders these days. I mean, going back to the days of manually having to include every single file you wanted is not for me. Uh, interfaces, not much use on their own generally without the use of iterators. Iterators, it depends what you're using them for. And it depends whether you can wade through the documentation to figure out what the iterators actually do for you or if you really want to use them and look at what they can do for you in depth, read either of those two books, either Josh Tyson's or Cal Evans' book. They are well worth reading anyway, uh, if only to uh, implement the same functionality yourself using generators. So useful in that regard. Exceptions, well, all the libraries I write, I define my own exceptions these days. A lot of other libraries are very similar. But if you're still using SPL exceptions, if you ever use them, or still using libraries that do so, they kind of have to be retained, but they could be deprecated. There's not much value to be had in them above and beyond user land defined functions, uh, exceptions. Data structures. Data structures I like to have in PHP. I use them a lot, but I'd rather use Rudy Tunison's data structures than the SPL ones these days. File handling, wonderful for your PHP file handling. You want object oriented, it gives you that in spades. And it does provide a heck of a lot of built-in methods that if you were writing the file handling in procedural code using standard procedural functions, you'd have to write 10, 20 lines, that type of thing. You can set maximum line lengths for when you're writing files so that it automatically wraps into new lines and other wonderful things like that. Uh, so they're actually extremely powerful and I think they should be used more and more in PHP definitely something to keep within SPL, even if everything else was dropped. The miscellaneous functions, use with caution. They're extremely dangerous things, some of them. Use reflection, or if, for those of you that are in Asgrim, James Titcombe's talk this morning, use better reflection, which uh, provides very much the same functionality. At, very much the same performance. So the jury's out still. That's my personal preference for things that should be dropped, things or ways in which SPL could be improved. Does anyone have any questions at this point? I can't see anyone at all. Bright lights. Oh. I can see someone. Is the project already dead? The I, think, I think it's dead. It's still part of PHP, but they couldn't be bothered yeah. to go through updating it for PHP 7 when they did the big push to P for so PHP 7. So there is no 7. new development? There's no new development going on with SPL at all. And like I say, much of it has been superseded over the years with with other new features that perform and, uh, rather better. Now, do you know whether there is uh, any intention to uh, incorporate uh, something from SPL to PHP core from uh, people? Well, technically, it is all in PHP core. Yeah, so um, there is... It's just not being looked at with a view to improve it by anybody at the moment. There have been a few breathings, but not much more on PHP internals about replacing 
the data structures. I would like to see it a lot more than just whisperings that it would be a good idea. I'd like to see solid evidence that they're planning on doing so. But they would have to deprecate the SPL data structures first. So I don't think we're likely to see anything until PHP 8 at the very least. Okay, thank you. Okay, well, that's me, my name's Mark Baker. I'm known for two things. I'm the person that is responsible for PHP Office suite of uh, libraries. For those that want to kill me, please wait 10 minutes or so. Give me one last cigarette before you do so. And I'm known for the PHP Rainbow Elephant Envis. Thank you very much for listening to me today. Now all go enjoy the break and a coffee. <laughs>